All right, we are checking out this flywheel today to determine if it's uh, basically good or bad. There are a couple things we have to check. One is the surface condition, and this one is not looking good. You can see some rust all around, a little area that we test cleaned up here. But you can see some uh, problems with the surface. So everyone can tell that, but the next critical step is we're gonna measure the runout of this flywheel to see if it's warped or if it's okay or not. And from here, we have to refer to our specifications, which we got. This particular one's from Toyota. And flywheel runout allowable is four thousandths of an inch. And if it's above four, it's no good. And if it's four or less, uh, we're gonna say it's good assuming we can get the surface cleaned up. So we're gonna go ahead and measure the runout right now. We're gonna turn the engine over with our dial indicator on it and see what we get for a reading. Now it's flicking around a little bit because it's hitting some rust on the surface. So far we're still zero. Maybe just a little, yeah, still pretty much zero. Okay. Getting a little low. And we're gonna do a full 360 on this and see what the difference is. see we are almost two thousandths off of the zero. Would have liked to have it go the other way, but it's good. I think we got about one more turn. In fact, the highest we got was actually at one thousandth. Each tick mark is a half of a thousandth on this one. So... We made it all the way around, right? right. Yes, now, sir. we were at the second line right there, which is actually one thousandth of an inch. We know because it's telling us the indication here, point zero 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 five is half thousandth. So we have one thousandth run out on this flywheel, which means it's not warped. So it could potentially be okay if we can get the surface cleaned up. So if we can clean the surface up, we're gonna see if we can run it. I got my special volunteer here. Jay, we're using a Rolock disc. It's not a real abrasive disc. It's actually plastic, so it's not going to take a whole lot of material off. We're just going to try to clean it up. So go where's your glasses? No, no. Here you go. Go ahead and give it a shot, Jay. Well, Start cleaning the, it up. Off, yeah, well, we could leave it and we can get just get it out of the way a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, Jay, go ahead and start doing like what we did right here. We're going to start cleaning it up. All right. I don't recommend doing it with sandpaper. It takes too long. <laughs> Wide open. Wide open. Punch it. Punch it. We don't have all day here. All right, so after cleaning up with the Rolock disc, the surface is looking pretty good. With a nice little cross hatch on it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our dial indicator back over and reset it up and take that measurement one more time <clears throat> just to confirm that everything is good. So Jay's gonna do that. Augie can get the pry bar the we pry gave bar. away. We'll get another pry bar. Oh, you have one to pull out? Uh, on the lower drawer there should be one. Oh, yeah, this one right here. Yeah. yeah. So explain to us what we're doing. We're gonna bring this dial indicator in, get a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, move it, move it up a little bit so it's not quite uh, it's not maxed out, it's like in a good range. Not real far in, but not all the way out either. There's a healthy little gap here. And from there, just get it set a little bit towards the outside. And there's some debate, but we're gonna do it on the friction surface where the clutch actually touches. 
but further towards the outside to get uh, as accurate a reading as possible. Tighten it up, make sure everything looks good. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and we'll re-zero it and we'll take, a, take one pass and see which way it goes. Some people prefer to uh, have it only go positive, but I think the math is pretty simple. So even if it goes on the negative side, we can still figure out what that means. And we'll get it right on the money, straight down, right at zero. And so we'll go ahead and we'll turn this again. You could turn it by the crankshaft. This engine's on a stand backwards, so we can't really access the crankshaft right now. And we're gonna go ahead and turn it. Do that full 360 again. You'll notice it's a lot more smooth. It's not jumping as much because we cleaned up a little bit of high spots where there were rust. And we're staying pretty close to zero. We're about half a thousandth now. We would kind of expect to be near uh, one thousandth like we were before. Okay, so we went about a negative half and about a positive half, which is a total of one. And yeah, so we're we're maybe just maybe just a hair over one thousandth of an inch. Okay, that's but again, one complete Yeah, that was it. One full revolution. But again our spec here is four thousandths. And so I would say based on our surface being really good and a thousandth roughly of run out, I would call this a serviceable flywheel. We would just be ready to install our clutch disc and tighten everything to spec. Now we had one before that was defective. We had this flywheel and it had excessive run out so we tried to uh, put it in a lathe and resurface it. You'll notice this one had some bluing so when we tried to resurface it you could see we started here and worked our way out towards the outside. And then we saw these shiny spots. They look like low spots, but they're not low. They're just, they're just discolored from heat. And so they're actually hardened. This part of the flywheel has been hardened, probably because the clutch was slipping for so long and ended up uh, getting so hot, it hardened parts of this flywheel. So these are hot spots or hard spots. And as soon as you see that in a flywheel, uh, it's junk. You can't resurface this anymore. You got soft metal and hard metal and soft metal and hard metal. So this clutch is definitely going to chatter and be a problem. So this would be a non-serviceable flywheel. And if you have uh, some bluing, it's pretty likely this is what they're going to find when they go to resurface the flywheel. So that's it. If you pass the test, you can use it.